Mein Name ist Silvan Klaudrath. Ich bin quer durch Deutschland gereist, um mich mit den spannendsten Führungspersönlichkeiten auf einen Kaffee zu treffen. Heute bei Culture Coffee, Ida Tin, die CEO von Clue. Another thing that I hear in most interviews is company culture is about purpose, so um, culture is anchored in a purpose. For me, when I was preparing, it felt very easy to imagine, uh, you know, based on prejudice, I assume, that the comp your company, Clue, also has a shared purpose. Is that so, by the way? Mm -hmm. so yeah, for sure. We do definitely have a strong purpose culture. Um, which is really centered around this sense of, can we give more space and culture for female health? Can we help people understand their bodies? Can we help them have a stronger voice? Can we help them navigate their health journeys? Um, it's a really underserved area, under-researched, underfunded. Um, so there's a lot of work to be done. Mm. And then again, I'm asking myself, do you need to have uh, this strong anchor? Do you need this purpose for good performance, for example? Or can a company that has less of a purpose still be very successful? Well, the way we think about it is how do we marry being a high performance culture with being a purpose driven culture? You really think you need both. Um, if you're only purpose driven, you might become an NGO. We <laughs> kind of are not sustainable, maybe, as a business. Um, and if you're a performance-only culture, I think you like out, you, you sort of miss out on um, both attracting talent that want to have purpose in their life and in their work lives, but also sort of the the coherence, the drive, the motivation. There's an energy in purpose which is really helpful. Mm. Um, and I also feel that there is something changing in culture where people just don't want to work for something that doesn't feel meaningful at all. Mm. Or at least there's more and more people that are hungry to do something that feels like it's feeding their soul also, not only their wallets. Um, and I think the world needs it. I think a world where we only care about money is ending up in funky places. Mm. We see a lot of sort of side effects of that at the moment. And I think that awareness is growing where we're like, okay, we need to, we need to start thinking about, you know, environment or, you know, well-being or equality and many other things so for me it's a thing of the past to think that you can be a performance culture only I just think it's not it doesn't fit to humans mm -hmm. it doesn't fit to our planet mm -hmm. yeah it resonates with me for sure um, so I lately had a conversation with the CEO of uh, Doctors Without Boundaries um, mm -hmm. I don't know how you call them mm -hmm. in, in English and um, Obviously, they have a very strong purpose. And what I found so intriguing was that almost the purpose is more important than the company and the team back home. Mm. Because you're somewhere in the field, right? You're trying mm. to help people whose lives are at risk. Mm -hmm. So it's almost difficult to build a company culture that is coherent, I thought. And then I spoke to him and said, yes, there's sometimes a little bit of a conflict. You know, you know what is more important, the field work or you know, working with the team back home. But in the end, he said, this internal drive that everybody has because of mm. there's a purpose is just paramount and it's mm. worth anything. Yeah, and I think quite fast you realize that an organization is like really, it's really a team effort, right? Everybody needs everybody. And I'm sure when you're the doctor out there, you know you need your home office and not the way around. Like it's one team mm. and it doesn't matter where you sit in that system. Everybody is crucially important. Mm -hmm. So also when I was thinking about the purpose question, I was thinking about, I was checking my, my prejudice again a little bit. Um, I was trying to imagine how your work environment would be and um, I would think it's a mostly female work environment. Is it true, by the way? We are pretty much 50-50. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I started out uh, founding the company with four men. So it was a 20-80 ratio. Tech company, there we go. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, one was a hardware person, one was a UX person, one was a coder, so maybe traditional, maybe, but the other ones could have maybe been. Anyway, how it was. And now our management team is skewing more female, but I actually feel that I'd rather have a better balance. Mm -hmm. um, I don't personally 
believe so much in this idea of build by women for women. Mm -hmm. I think much more about build by a diverse team for the world. Mm -hmm. um, we definitely need men on this team. I'm very grateful for all the beautiful men working here. I'm grateful for our male investors. Um, I'm grateful for my male partner that have you know been here, built this company, and supported. And also, we need you know everything that is narrowed into being sort of a female issue is a complete illusion. I mean, w reproductive health is, if anything, you know, including all genders and teamwork. And you need we need to. We need to have, of course, male doctors and male researchers and male financiers and male everything to be involved with this thing. So that, that needs to start here. It needs to start with this true inclusion of, yes, we need all kind of voices to build this product. When I was um, raising funds with, for my own companies back then, very often the investors, they would look for the four T's. They would look for team, traction, timing, and technology. And you know, those are, sometimes they also have seven T's, doesn't matter. So um, they, they look for those things. And team is one element in there. And I feel team and culture is inherently linked. Mm -hmm. um, why is it so important to investors and or should be to any company that there is good culture? It's because if you have bad culture, it slows everything down potentially to a grind mm -hmm. or a health. I mean, you, I mean, a company really is just a group of people coming together in a room and making things happen. So if you have people sitting there and being able to communicate really efficiently without too much noise on the line, it makes things move. Mm -hmm. um, and I think again, you know, it attracts talent retains talent. Um, it makes people go that extra mile when you really need it. Um, it's, it makes it fun, it makes it, you know, something you want to keep doing. Um, but also, I mean, if you have really, I mean, if you go all the way out, you will end up having maybe fraud or sort of non-compliant laws. Like you, you end up in weird places if, if, if you know, if you have a culture that will invite that kind of behavior. Mm -hmm. um, How do you measure it though? How do you measure culture? It's such a organic moving thing, isn't mm -hmm. it? I think we need to trust what our, this, we have a really advanced sensory system here, right? It's like taking hundreds and thousands of millions of years to develop. I mean, it can do a lot. I like that idea. And when you walk into a room, this intelligence will tell you stuff and we need to trust that that's important data <laughs> you know mm -hmm. and you walk into a room and you'll know if it feels off mm -hmm. you know you'll know if it's like okay that meeting was really tense it was not enjoyable mm -hmm. and for me it's like how much more do we need to measure it I mean <laughs> you know mm -hmm. we will know if we have if we've trained that sensibility, we'll, we'll know. Um, I mean, of course, you can look at sort of, you know, churn of employees, and you can look at, you know, harassment problems, or you can look at there's many signals, but essentially it's like, does this feel right? I mean, mm. do you? <laughs> I like the notion that we are this big sensor. Um, it reminds me of something that I read, um, that one of the core issues, I don't know if it's a core issue, but a big issue in robotics and making humanoid robots walk is actually that our feet they have so many, you know, um, sensors in there. We mm -hmm. have so many things, and the robot doesn't. So mm -hmm. they haven't found a way to mimic the way our feet work. And maybe mm. the same thing is true yeah. for us in culture. We have so many little antennas that we're not even aware of. Um, we should listen to it more. I mean, I think that's a big sort of idea for us here is that our body holds this intelligence, right? Our body remembers and our body picks up things and our body tells us things. I mean, most of the neural activity goes not from the brain down, but the other way up. Mm. I mean, we literally pick up a lot of information and I think one of the powers of tracking and using technology is almost this translation from our body. We can actually learn to hear what our body is telling us. Mm -hmm. And I think particularly when you think about sort of preventive health or, um, you know, things that are related to how do I stay well? How do I stay healthy? It's really important that we start picking up these signals of like, okay, like, 
you know, my cycle used to be, you know, 24 days and now it's 34. Hmm. Why? Something is off. Like, and you, and now we can sort of say this casually, but you'd be surprised at how many women don't know their bodies. Mm -hmm. Like they, they don't know what's normal. They don't know what's healthy. And we are trained in culture to sort of put this whole experience aside, right? It's taboo. It's not, we're not supposed to say, yeah, like it's not a good day for this meeting. You know, I actually feel really crappy, you know? So bringing this whole intelligence out, I think is a big part of what technology can help us do. And mm -hmm. in terms of culture, it's a little bit the same. How do we, how do we take it seriously? How do we actually create space to be like, okay, the team is afraid right now. How do I as a leader know how to hold space for this? How do I know to, you know, accept it, that it's accept there it, and... work with it, do something with it. You know, you know, it's, it's a thing. It, I have to deal with it. Um, it's not a smart move to say you're not allowed to feel this way because I don't want to have this feeling not right now. So I mean, it just doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. So.